Thought Stefan and I would come down and surprise a couple of uh, local well-known people here in Foxton. Dave Seavers and Bob Hoskins who come down and get rid of the willow on the river loop here. We're on the Pity Harakiki walkway in the forest and we're just waiting for them to arrive. So we'll see what they have to say when they get here. But they've been going hard out trying to get rid of the willows all along the banks of the uh, Manawatu River Loop at Foxton. And uh, we'll see what they have to say. Sure is a nice day today, isn't it? Sure is. We look around this forest here and uh, all pine trees on this walkway so far. These guys, I think I can hear a bit of. Uh, Bit of a vehicle happening here. And these old guys, they do loads of work around the place. They won't like being like movie stars, I'm sure. Look at that, eh? Greetings. How are you? Cool, mate. Thought it was uh, thought it was Bob and Dave coming down. Oh, Dave's here. Nice. Come here. The boss is here. The boss is here. <laughs> Bob will be here in a minute. Here we've got the charge of the light brigade now. All the troops are arriving now. Tight in here, getting everything turned around. How are you? Getting along, eh? All ready for a morning. Cutting down trees, I suppose. Poisoning willows. Poisoning willows. They need to be poisoned. Gotta get wheeler. Gotta get rid of the willows if you want a good wetlands. That's dead right. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I saw it in the wilderness magazine. <laughs> and what the wilderness magazine and what Bob don't tell me, I mean, not worth knowing. So what happens is. Willows are a very useful species for retaining stop banks. 
and stopping erosion. But the problem is that because they're non-native and because they're easily broken, all of the little pieces that break off regrow. Yeah. So they're very invasive and they just take over. Okay. All of them take over. So when you remove them, what you've got to do is you've actually got to remove every piece of them. Because if you don't, every little piece that you drop on the ground will grow. So it's got to be total extermination. So you've got to remove all of the trunk and all of the canopy and take it somewhere either to be burnt or we put it in the forest here to uh, the shade kills it. Yeah, nothing, they don't survive in the forest here, do they? No. They don't get enough light. Geez, you're togging up uh, quite well there, mate. All the gears you got there. Oh, yeah, like it there. He thinks he's wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the third member of the party over here? <laughs> it's John there. Oh, he's only pork gears. Hey, John. He's only pork. Yeah. How are you? A key member oh. of our team. A key member of the team. He's only pork He's got to do as he's told because he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. We'll, all, we'll all start like that though. This is, uh, this is John uh, Bat. And this is Stefan here, my son. Hello, Stefan. Good morning, Stefan. Good, Good, Good to see you. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful in the forest? Oh, yeah. Isn't it fantastic? This, this is Dave Sievert. This is fantastic in the forest. It's just, just fantastic. You know, listening to the birds and walking through it, it's just brilliant. Yeah. There's Bob, he's the intelligent one. Six years. <laughs> this is the instrument of torture. The instrument of torture, the, the uh, Piri Harakiki Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, the one. That does so well. She's a 20 year old chainsaw that should be dead. It's done an awful lot of work. It started by just, you know, coming through the forest and cleaning it all up. How long have you been working on this section down here? Oh, only about three months, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, three years. You've taken an awful lot of stuff out if you look around. There's an awful lot. It's getting busier by the moment. This is like busier than the main street of town. <laughs> it is at this time of the day. We thought you guys were poachers. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is uh, Raymond. Hey Raymond, how are you mate? That's John's brother, Raymond Bunn. That's my companion in the sun. How are you mate? Glad we didn't bring bowls oh. along, Steve. It's whenever you're ready. Not if you have to try too hard. Another day, another dollar. Yep, that's the one. Save the river. Save the river, the man said.
left to die in the shade of the bush, no water there. These guys are all volunteers and have been doing it for years. This is a problem we can never get rid of the willows, but they like the proverbial possum. Responsibility like I got, you're gonna put up with it. This little instrument here. I just here. hold that, just give us a sec. Right. So you can see that the move okay. Sorry, Boom. Yeah. You can see they get quite big. Do you have to get the whole stump out or you just no. get the point and then you poison it? What we'll do is that's the cambium of the tree, that's where the tree grows. Yeah. So they grow out with an annual ring each year from that that level yeah. and what we do is we use neat glyphosate and we just spray neat glyphosate on and that the part there part so it doesn't keep going. And, and that will suck into the tree yeah. and that will kill it um, no doubt about it just you can use things like vigilant gel yeah. but vigilant gel is about 38 bucks for 250 mil yeah. whereas glyphosate is like about six dollars a litre when you buy it in bulk yeah. So I just use a, a spray and wipe bottle and spray it on that. We just get down as far as we can, because yeah. as you can see, the willow's just starting to sprout now. Yeah. All of this. So we take as much of this off as we can. But down at this level, as you can see, is actually quite a task. So there'll be a load of firewood if you want to come down and get it, mate. Sure thing, man. The problem is that a piece like that, if left on the ground, will grow. Same. It will it will bud and it will grow. 
So you have to remove everything, which is a bit of a pain. That's just the way it goes. This glyceria is like a great big paddock here, isn't it? Well, you can, the cows can actually eat glyceria. The cows can actually eat glyceria and, and sorry there. No, you got me. The cows can actually eat glyceria, but the problem with glyceria is that it actually concentrates some elements like cyanide. So you have to be careful that they don't eat that they don't eat too much. Now the other thing is that in summer, because all of this is sand country, what happens is it dries out. Most of the, the local farmers' fields dry out. But this stays damp so that they can put their cattle in here and get summer dry feed. And the cows have got really clever. They know it's very muddy and it's very boggy. So what they do is they come down at low tide and if they do happen to get stuck, they wait for the high tide just to lift them off. And we've seen it dozens of times. And you wouldn't think so, but the cattle get will swim across the river and get into this, which is a bit of a problem unless the other side is fenced we can't actually replant this with flaxes. Piraharakiki, which is the name for the Manawatu River Loop at Foxton, actually means clinging flax, because when the Manawatu River was in full flood, it would wipe out the trees, it would wipe out virtually everything in its path, except for the flaxes, which were just left clinging to the banks. So that's what Piraharakiki means. And what we would like to do and reinstate these wetlands by planting a lot of flax. And the advantage with that is that wetlands are the kidneys of the system. Wetlands are the things that will purify water. So if you're wanting an increase in water quality, then uh, replanting wetlands is the way to do it. But wetlands have other advantages too. One of them is that it, it, it increases the habitats for things, endangered species like tuna, eels, and whitebait. Whitebait and eels both require shelter and if you replant them with native shrubs and trees it stops things like whitebait getting sunburnt. Believe it or not they can get sunburnt. So when you just have wide expanses of glyceria like this it's not a great deal of shelter for, the, for the, our, our native species. So by replanting wetlands and re-establishing wetlands and removing all of this glyceria we hope to increase the biodiversity of the region. Nice man. They certainly don't. So you can just see the um, young willow shoots coming away there and they really are a weed. And they all have to be gotten rid of. Finding them, sussing them out, it's a bit like a willow branch tree hut really when the smaller versions. And as we pan out across there, give you an idea where we are. Over the glyceria there. And now we start looking right down to the, um, the beach. There's the boat club in the distance. And out to sea out that way, that's where the Manawatu River mouth is here, just to the left of that building and this all used to be river folks this all used to be the Manawatu River and everything that you see is sediment build up over the years that has shut this end of the loop off as we head around this way where we'll be following the Piri Harakiki walk we're going to Stefan and I are going to go and have a look at where the sewerage pipe goes over and walk over the bridge, the sewerage pipe bridge, onto Matakarapa Island. I'll borrow your chopper. That's all they do is just bloody yeah. Come spray God. around the edge of it. And it tells the whole thing. Can you give, can you give, uh, yeah, it's just finding the trees oh, and. Um, he's going to do over there. I'll like come over there. The wetlands and, as well. Oh, you're going over there. Okay. I'll go over talking there. Talking about the wetlands and how to, how to plant them out to make the fish and the native native animals that have come back and improve the water quality and um, plant more flax. This is used to be covered with flax and now I actually can't spot one piece of flax anywhere along here. So it's a bit of a shame. Really.
Oh, well, there'll be plenty soon if we get our way. Right, shall we go for a wander down to the um, sewerage bridge, sewerage pipe bridge? Let's do that and we'll come back and see these guys in a couple of hours. These guys are creating a, a really good pile of willow here under the under the trees here. And willows cannot survive being under here, out of the sunlight, no water, and so they die off here and these bits don't have to be poisoned as such. And that stacks just from this morning in these last few minutes. Big job. This part of the loop is just so disgusting. It's just been used as a big paddock. We're on top of the stop bank heading down towards the sewerage pipe bridge and it's just absolutely diabolical here. Look at that. <laughs> Good old Manawatu River Loop at Fox today, eh? not looked after at all. We're on top of the stop bank and as you can see, looking down at the river there and we come across this. We're right up here. Whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of cows just down in there onto the left of the stop bank. And uh, we'll just see where they shoot off to shortly. I'll get Steph to carry on walking down there. A lot of stock down in there, all resting up in the shade. Not their fault, they're only where they're allowed to be. But there's just uh, crap all along here on the top of the stock bank, so there's no way that they're not using this as a paddock. are actually fenced into it just like last time when I was having a wander along here with Sonia Hart. <clears throat> all of that There's a remnant of the fence, but that's just all been goes straight into straight into there. See which way these cows go. Doesn't look like the old cows are going to go anywhere. <laughs> They're just standing there, the lot being filmed by the look of it. Well, these fellas don't seem in the remotest bit shy. Just sitting in there. So these lovely ladies are all just out of the sun or mostly out of the sun here on the highway side of the stop bank just resting up and then they cross over the stop bank which is right here Ooh, let's go out this way let's start that one again so these lovely ladies are just sitting down in the shade a little bit minding their own business I guess 
Oh, look at this, we got a really got one here showing a bit of interest. guys just cross over the stop bank just here open paddock into the Manawatu or two river loop and that's what they help create look at that a sea of crap An absolute sea of it tasty tasty as Some farmer's dog getting chased off by the cow. We'll come and have a look. So here you can see it, we're right on top of the stop bank. And just hang a left there, cows, and you're down into your homeland. Yeah, just cruise on across, Steph. There's the bridge that takes the sewerage pipe over. Look at that, eh? It's a high tide board and a bit of rubbish. That's how high up it gets. if he uh, can get over there without this bridge and uh, see how far it is to the sewage treatment ponds of Foxton. Yeah, this is what you find pretty much everywhere. There's more junk. Old suitcase come in with the tide. We're actually on the bed of what used to be the Manawatu River. Now look at it. Tragedy. Tight row packed up here. Don't want this to turn into a funniest home videos moment. No, nah, definitely not, mate. Don't want to lose any gear. Nice. Hard to believe what I did this morning somehow makes its way all the way through here. Yeah, yeah, well, it's the sewage treatment. Yeah, just wonder, mate. This 
going to go over and visit the settlement ponds and see what we can see. Yeah. Oh, just how they got this bloody barbed wire. This Can't razor. hear you, mate. This razor wire they've got sort of half semi blocking the, the end of it. Oh, true. We'll have a look at that. Well, here we are on top of the uh, sewerage walkway bridge. Mm. That's looking towards Levin essentially. It's, uh, the loop finishes pretty much just up there, around that corner. By the looks of the water, the further you get up towards the closing of the, the loop, the water progressively looks worse and worse. I don't think you can pay me any money in the world to jump off this bridge. It just looks well, like I'd hope not, Steve. Pretty bad, eh? living in there. So there's some razor wire up there which is stopping entrance so we'll have to negotiate that by the look of it. Don't want to catch yourself on that stuff. Let's go and have a look. We're looking back towards where we saw the boys working real hard getting rid of all of the willow. Looking back into the sun a little bit there, but loop carries on back around and those trees on your right up there is where our, our guys are working wonderful men from Save Our River Trust, Dave Sievert, Bob Hoskins and accomplices. Reminds me of a concentration camp. They're usually for people not to be able to get out of but this is one to stop people getting into and it is private property here, it's George Jarvis's property so you can only imagine a gate's probably a better system than putting razor wire that's just dangling right down into the river. Dangling over the side there, right down into the water. All that razor wire up into here. We'll go and have a look over the brow of the hill anyway, I'm sure we're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, the pipe just crossed the river and crossed this little wee track here and into the treatment ponds which we've already visited so now we know how it all works and we'll head on back across the bridge back to the boys that are cutting up the willow, cutting up and poisoning the willow. puzzle put together on how all of this works. Gives uh, one the opportunity to think about alternatives. I do a lot of thinking about it though, that's for sure. Back over towards the stop bank. Walking over the Manawatu River Loop at Foxton. Well, this was the Manawatu River, remember that. Cut 
get your leg. On that razor wire. Hopefully these will come down later. the willows over so often what you find is a trunk on the ground that will go like 20 feet and you'll have a whole row of willows popping up off it so they just get covered with all of the mud and all of the debris coming down from the flood that makes it quite difficult to remove so it's like a repetitive thing too like you obviously you have to um, keep doing it really otherwise mm. you can't sort of get rid of unless it unless you remove all of the willows yeah, yeah they just keep re you know, breaking off, they'll keep on sprouting Just the... as long as they're in the moisture. Mm. If they're in the dry, they won't, but if they're in the moisture, they will. Yeah, right. So off off to another tree, eh? Yep. Off to another tree. Yep. Hey, well, we'll catch up with you guys, eh? Yep. Good on you. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Nice Thanks, meeting Michael. you all. Yeah, we'll catch up with Good you later. See you. Steve, And off they go to find another willow tree in the Piti Harakiki walkway on the banks of the river loop at Foxton. Put on there and then I can start talking. Good. But at least there's one good thing about chopping down all this willow on the Manawatu river loop here and that is going to get some firewood out of it. So I'll have to come back down with the old trailer and pick that up. The boys said I could have it. They've moved on just up the way there to another willow tree. We're going to head on home. It's been a lovely walk. And uh, if it wasn't for the efforts of these people that do it purely voluntarily, uh, we'd be getting absolutely nowhere. But they're definitely creating the impetus for others to follow. And well done to them. Well done to Save Our River Trust, in fact. <laughs>